Hey, y'all been rocking for ages, right? Oh man, for too long. In my mom's basement. Shout out, mama. Huh? She would Bo- never let Bobby eat with us, though. Damn. Oh, yeah. well, she she would like never let. I couldn't I would it, never man. tell her. I'm gonna tell you. I used to never tell my mom when my friends would be here. She used to come home from work, and all my partners would be down in the basement making slap. She would have only dinner planned for three. Me, my dad, and my mom. You feel me? Bob would come up hella late trying to get a trying to get a, a platter. platter. <laughs> She'd only give him a breadstick. She'd be like, "Yeah, you could get a breadstick." She'd be like, "Bobby, you could take a bread. You could take a breadstick." <laughs> You feel me? They be in there eating nice platters. You feel me? I'm just not used to that because when my my homie slid through my crib, my mom would make sure everybody plattered up. Yeah, but you would tell your mom everybody was coming. I wouldn't even tell. Nah, my mom it's just be it's mommy. just we wore our welcome out at Nick's mom's house off top. It, like my mom would have company once every week. We'd be at Nick's house every day, you know. But that's why we here right now because 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 we was murder mobbing so hard. You feel me? Y'all eating together right now? How about that? Eating uh, together. Yeah, we platter, sure. man. We platter now hard. We platter together <laughs> hey. we're definitely hey. plattering together we got the bros in the building it's a bay takeover oh nick made this song you hear playing in the background the ao song see. you feel me, me that, that hey. pretty dj mike over there got looped but uh you know nick nick just posted a video of it on uh on his instagram which is at nick knack beats of him and talk of chris and tiger performing it and it's already going to japan it's already doing things you feel me so uh my new song is called My Jam, and it's a hit. You feel me? It's Let's with Zendaya and Jeremiah. Play. You feel me? We're going to play it in a little bit. We're but gonna get And that. then I got a song out right now called Hot Box with my bread G Easy yep. and my bread Mila J. You Y'all dropped the remix too, right? Yeah, it was so in, in too short, you know. So we just making music. We we having fun. We living life. You feel me? We trying to make things happen, man. We putting on for the bait. We putting on for ourselves. We putting on for the squad. You feel me? We putting on for your bitches. We putting on for everybody. <laughs> hey, coming from the bay, I, I I can't help but notice that when I see niggas from the bay get on on that main stage level, it's like you know what? I support them. It's only right that I got a platform and I have y'all niggas come up here and support your projects. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Thank and you. I, it's and good, it's good to be able to be candid. You feel me? Just, you know, the fans, they want to be like, you know, we want to hear them talk, you know. And, and, uh, and they could cuss and they could do whatever they need to do. You feel me? So I could be like, you know. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good not to be able to have to overthink shit, you feel me? Yeah, this came to do, Nick made the beat, I wrote the hook. Hey, you tell me how we made hey, this, this is the only one you made, right? Because it ain't nothing to make these hoes want it, man. <laughs> <laughs> get them tipsy a little blunted, man. This Bob, ain't the only one toasted. you wrote, though. You done wrote a lot of shit, right? Oh, yeah, bro. I be, you feel me? My pen is gold, bro. My pen is, 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 is worth probably, I would say, $50 million. It's a $50 million pen, man. But uh, <laughs> we wrote this, we was smacked. <laughs> We was smacked in the studio. Nick came over super drunk. You feel me? My homie K Young was over there. And we just wrote this shit and it, and it start sounding groovy. Hey you know hey, when this shit hey sounds big, you feel me? Yeah. Hey Bob, I got a story. I was I last night, right? At the studio. I yeah. left I left my keys and my jacket in the studio. Uh-huh. And this motherfucker K Young took both. <laughs> And I had to go meet K Young at Boston Nova, and he was getting kicked out of Boston Nova right when I pulled that up. Nigga, K Young is a goon. Yeah, he's a goon, <laughs> but one of the best voices in LA. Oh That's my gosh, his voice is amazing. Why was he getting kicked out? He was trying to smoke cigarettes in there or something? Bruh, he was doing some baby <laughs> shit. He was, he was trying to fight the security guard and hella shit. K Young's the goon, but I feel he like got Bossa Nova is the meetup spot, too. Everybody hey, yeah, right Bossa Nova. Yeah, sometimes I don't like going places like that where you're going to... I love Bossa Nova's food. I would get it delivered, but I don't like going places where I'm going to see a million motherfuckers. It's like... Because cause it's like sometimes it's like I just want to be around the bridge and you don't want to say hi to... To a lot of motherfuckers who you damn near half like, you feel me? So it's like, let's just go platter somewhere more settled, you feel me? But swingers, yeah, we got some, <laughs> we got a tucky spot. So I like to go to Tender Greens, get my cafeteria, cafeteria style greens, food. Yeah, and dip. Hey, but y'all been rocking for a minute. I'm gonna bring it back, bring it back for y'all, okay? Yeah, because yeah, y'all worked on um, this is mama's like, basement. Time. If, if, if people don't know, tell them how the beginnings started, okay? Besides the sharing the platters, how did the Back in the day How did I y'all start Bob. out? Yeah, I met Bob through a mutual friend At an A's game At an Oakland A's game And he was with his be- one of his good friends The Jinx Who's singing <laughs> on the song about the Jinx, yeah. 
Yeah, the Jinx. Yeah, the Jinx is crazy. He was a the visionary the, at a very the jinx, young age. The Jinx is the Jinx taught me how to write songs, but I don't be singing. I rap. You feel me? But we was in the group together, and you know his his voice is amazing, and he's a crazy songwriter too. But some of his song to- the cop- topics would be super exotic, you know. And I'm really good at knowing what people are gonna gravitate to, so I started trying to write songs too and collaborate with him. And I had to learn how to half hit a note so he would know how to interpret the shit. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But that's how yeah, we started. That's how we met at an A's game. And then he took, we went to his car, No Homo, <laughs> and he played me like a bunch of the songs they were working on. And at the time, I had just started making beats. I was not like anywhere like because when I first started out, I was terrible. I, I can admit that I, I wasn't like born with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, we and all were. I suck too. <laughs> I used to. Got... I used to. I, my first songs I played for Nick. Like I play. I tried to play him our cool shit at first, but I played him the very first songs I met. I had a song called Shit Juice. You feel me? And <laughs> on, it was, on the uh, on <laughs> the T.I. Grey Goose. It was on, on the, the T.I. Gray... Get Loose, baby. If you want to get loose. called the song Shit Juice. And I was in the back singing Shit Juice. It was horrible. <laughs> no, but that's what it was. Like me and him didn't start working because we both were hella clean. Me and him just started working because we wanted of the to vibe, do it, you man. Feel me? We and wanted we to have fun. Had it, so. We have fun, and our my, our parents supported it because it kept us. You know, they know where we was at. You feel me? So where did the group name Go Dave? come from i got it tatted on my arm man you feel me gifted distributing amazing ventures man mm. still tatted on my arm to this day nick gotta get his go dave tat you, you do nick, I, would, what's... I would never get that tatted. <laughs> <laughs> hey we're gonna go into that this is one of the first records that i heard of y'all two on there and you know what this shit was on the bay area big shot y'all remember the bay area big shot from 106 came here where they had the yeah. contest where y'all was on there yep. and shit and we oh won. shit we and won that's, that's why they played it on and then, you know I, let me tell y'all a quick little 30 <laughs> hey. second story real fast <laughs> Fucking man, the first time I heard Ride or Die Chick, the first time we ever heard a song on the radio, I was leaving Prime. You feel me? We was all bouncing in with our dates in the limo, heading back to Oakland from San Francisco, and it came on the radio, and it was such a fulfilling feeling. I'm like, I could do this, I, I could do this for the rest of my life, cause the first time I ever heard, you feel me? I had my date choosing on me, like, oh, this this nigga on the radio right now. You feel me? So, my we make hey. music for the bitches. It's funny, mm-hmm. y'all beat. My group, because my group was on the same fucking Bay Area Big Shot. What Y'all niggas it? took it. It was Waniac Guns. We had a song called Get On Backs. If you do your research. Get on back. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you heard it? Hey, nigga, that shit's hella funny, but let's go to this. We're going to play right that here. right after. <laughs> Shout out DJ Michael over there holding us down. Hey, go Dave right here. It's the kick it right here. I don't know who Too doesn't many love thoughts. that song. <laughs> Not enough great women. Right? Too many thoughts. <laughs> hey Nick, first of all, how does it feel to hear that record, knowing that you you're behind that record and it's one of the most played records that I've ever heard in my life. One yeah, of the biggest yeah. records of the year for <laughs> sure. Man, it feels crazy, man. It, it, it's it's definitely a, a rewarding thing. Mm-hmm. You feel me to be working this long at something, you feel me? Since I was like 15, working on music, you feel me, to have Chris Brown. Who I was always a big, who wasn't a big fan of Chris Brown growing up, you feel exactly. me? Exactly. Have him be in this, meet him. To, the first time I met him, my jaw dropped, you feel <laughs> me? I was like, God damn, like, this shit all paid off, you feel me? The fit, and he's hella cool, so. So explain that, explain you meeting him, because obviously, did you st- throw him when the I record, met like, him the email first, or like? Well, yeah, the first time I met him was through Sean Kingston, because uh, we had made the Beat It song with no features on it, and him and Sean are hella cool, so. I was just in the studio with Sean. Sean didn't even tell me he was coming through. Chris Brown walked through the door. I'm sitting there just hella drunk. Like, whoa, this shit is a movie. Oh, my God. What the fuck? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, this song right here. And I'm like, first time I met him, he was hella cool. Talking to me, chopping it up. Like, he was just a normal person, bro. He was hella humble, hella cool. So, that shit was crazy. And then what? You, you played that beat? Cause, yeah. Because that Loyal Re- song, like... <laughs> This well, shit slap. Well, but yeah, the the behind the scenes story is crazy. You got the loyal that. shit. Well, yeah, it happened because Bob and Ty made the whole shit. Oh shit! And I was I was playing the 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 rough version. It was just Bob and Todd's version. And uh, Boo, Chris's manager, uh-huh. came over to my house to to my garage where my studio is, and he heard it. He was like, "Man, I gotta give this shit to Chris." I hit Bob and Bob was hot because it was Bob's song. You feel me? Damn. Bob was mad. How do you I'm like, feel? Bob, we got to make this power move, bro. Like, shit, we could. Bob's always finna make hits. You feel me? Always. Ain't nothing to Bob. So, I'm like, I mean, Bob, let's make a power move right now and give this shit to Chris. If people don't know, like, the 143 record, I mean, I don't want to say you put on Nick, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, you did. Bob put me on. Shit. 
No, hey, yeah. 143 was mobbing. I know. Yep. Trust me, I know. 143 was the I, shit. That was the wave, bro. Yeah. yeah. That was the wave. So, okay. It's nothing to Bob to make it. I already know. But, right, yep. Yeah. Two on. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on now. Movie maker. Yeah, we working, man. But the, the crazy thing about um, Loyal is. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. I was, I had, I had a little. So did story. you want to give it to him? Did you want to give it? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> but I, I went bad on Nick. I was like, "Fuck you, you bitch." <laughs> he was mad. He was mad. I got at him too. I got at him back. <laughs> Feel me? Had to get at him. Got at him back. Hey, but that's how it is. And then I know. Explain how it is working together. Obviously, I feel like it's more. Not easier to work together, but you just no, natural. When you when you when you're comfortable with somebody, and you could say like, "Yo, I like this. I don't like that." Like straight up, bruh, I don't fuck with that. It's hard right. to say that to somebody that you don't have that relationship with. Yeah. Like they, could, they could tell me, like, "Oh yeah, Bob, that part and was Bob, cool." And, Do and it again. How Bob <laughs> likes to work is this is why I really fuck with him. Is he likes me to make a beat on spot like with him, and he'll tell me like, "Nah, not that sound. Like, nah, add it, make it more Japanese. Like, build it, make it." Give it more energy. Tell me, like Bob, damn there, make the beat too. Mm. You feel me? So it's like he, with him, he knows what he wants, and he can he can make a, a song with any producer because he's just gonna be there, exe- executive producing. But does like, that help you writing? Motherfucker. Yeah, because it, it, when writing, if it's one sound or one noise or one melody that in the beat that throws you off, you gon' you won't even like the beat. Like if you just play a beat and you just hear something that throws you off, you're like, I don't even like this shit. Right. But if, if but if you start from scratch, then you can eliminate that. You feel me? You can. And when you're producing, it's hard to take a step back the whole time. Exactly. And really listen to because I'm I'm over here mobbing like trying to get this shit going. <laughs> I'm not really listening to the vibe of the beat. He's Checking the vibe of the beat I'm just over here Trying to fucking Make something out of nothing mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying He's really sitting back Like really listening Like being critical Of it And I, when you're making it On spot You're not really being Too critical What do you you're make beats on? Fruity Loops Fruity Loops The hey. Loops Fruity Loops I remember what I was gonna say Man it's crazy Because Loyal Loyal went like crazy When Top 10 Hot 100 And, and Nick and, and Chris was away That whole time You feel me So this, just imagine The whole time it was charting He was away So like let, let's say You know Let's say somebody Passed away And came out with a song It's the same shit Because You can't go out And promote it You can't go out And perform it You can't can't do Instagram videos about it. You know, it's it's like it's like having a top ten song after you pass away. It's like the same thing. Mm-hmm. So like that song, if Chris wasn't away when that song was out, it would it would have went. Oh my gosh, it would. You would, think it it would bigger? Yeah. It's it, it's a huge song. It was like the, one of the hugest songs last year. But it would like it would have went. It would have won. A, it had to win a Grammy. If 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 Chris wasn't locked up, that song got a Grammy. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Off top. Hmm. That's real. That's a big statement. Yeah. I, I agree. I it went number nine. That. I it bet. went number nine uh, on the high one, nine on the rhythm. It went number one on the rhythm chart, and it went top ten on high one hundred. So that was big for Chris. Away, you feel me? Being away, being away being too. Up. Yeah, he can't go to no radios. Do no can't promotion. do no, no promo. promo, no nothing. And I, I was still tired. Of, not tired of hearing the song, but that shit was everywhere. Like you could walk anywhere without hearing that shit. Everywhere, parties, clubs. That's how you know how big a star Chris is and how good the song was. Because if you you got to go out and promote these songs, you man, do. to get them popping in this. And that song promoted itself. And there was me? there was three versions of it. They got two short, one with two short, yeah. one with French, French, and then one with Tiger. That was smart on their part yeah. because he knew that okay, two short ain't necessarily gonna be played like on the East Coast. So right. they put French on it for the East Coast, and then when they realized like we can't make two different videos, <laughs> and I guess they had planned the fan of a fan shit, so he threw and Tiger, Tiger. On and did the video. Yeah. Now we got the AO right AO there. with Tiger. But Chris first, Brown. we got this my jam. Okay, let's just talk about how that came about. Well, the honestly, the, the candid story is I was working on it with them joints for J Lo, and then uh, her A and R came through. She was sitting in the session the whole time, and then you know they ended up passing on it. And I was like, this song's a hit. They're tripping. You feel me? Like nobody, nobody can tell me what's tight. You feel me? So I was like, I called Zendaya. I was like, this song's hella tight. Let's make it our song. And she was down, and I hit Jeremiah about it. I was like, I got this song. I'm gonna do with Zendaya. I want you on it. Let's make it big. And he was down. But then I played it. I had a meeting with um, J Lo's manager like uh, a month ago, and I played him the song, or right before the song came out. And they they were like, well, we need this one for J Lo. I was like, I made this one for J Lo, but she didn't want it. You know, her A and R passed on it. So they was like, what? They called the A&R the next day. Like, why'd you pass on it? You know, but it's like, that's why you just got to know in your heart what you want to mm-hmm. go with. I don't yeah. need nobody. 
Obama could tell me a song ain't a hit, I'd be like, fuck you, you feel me? He wouldn't say fuck you. Never- <laughs> if I was smacked, I probably would. Right? Yeah, he just might. Yeah. Let's, get, let's get into that one right there. Let's go. Matter of fact, introduce this record, and you got to do exclusive live performance right here as long as you want to do it. You can do the whole damn song. You can whatever you want to do. It's I'll do all the good. It's all good. <laughs> this is my new song right here. It's called My Jam. Um, them joints produced it, and it features Jeremiah and Zendaya. We shot the video in Puerto Rico. It's not ready to go yet, so let's play another song. Uh, Nick, do you get mad I if, got you it. if you don't rap over your beats? Uh, if it, do I, I ain't, ain't got a Nick song in a year, boy. Oh, hold on, let's get what? I ain't got it. Let's come back to that. <laughs> we gonna talk about Nick ain't did a Bobby <laughs> Bracken song in a year. Right we'll get now, back bro. to that in a yeah, second. Let me go drop this. <laughs> My jam right here. Bobby Bracken's featuring Zendaya and Jeremiah. Another hit for the radio station. For the dad station. For the mother mobbers. Hey, it's the kick it. Live performance right here. Bobby Bracken's in studio. It's me in traffic, turning up with my people. Hey. Maybe in the East End, double these regals. Wanna find me? She ain't tripping off Nemo. Like 12 left. I built a new bridge. Take you to the crib, show you how a boss live. Gonna stay mobbing with the fifth fast fit. Turning up boot tank, cause that's my itch. I was mobbing to the Bay Ace head on. Vibing to the beat in my zone. Yeah, I get my gym on. Think I hear my jam coming in. Hey, 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 hey. Bobby Brackens live in studio right here. My jam. Was just wow. gonna talk about yeah, that. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. It's called mustard and mayonnaise. Mustard and mayonnaise. Yep. Now, is that the reason Bobby ain't got no fucking beats? <laughs> nah, that's not the reason. <laughs> Bob, Bob, Bob got beats. Every beat I make is for Bob, but we just been grinding in the studio, riding for. We're trying to help out everybody else because everybody else ain't got slaps. So we Bob, just trying. Yeah, right? <laughs> I don't know if that's the reason. <laughs> But uh, but man, uh, Bob got hits, man. He don't need me. Bob got nah, hits. The next song that I went after my jam is is I went Nick made it. It's this song called Faithful. It's dope. I want to try and get somebody really dope to sing the hook and then try and make that my single after my jam. So, but me that was the last song me and Nick made ago. That, that was like a year and a half ago. A year, a year and a half and ago. A half. Yeah. Oh, okay, well let's talk about the project about you and uh, Mustard. How'd that come about? Oh uh, man, because me I and seen Mustard. you with the Ten Summers hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's my boy, man. I'm, the jacket is on its way. Oh shit! I'm rocking with Mustard, man. That's my brother. Like me and him been rocking since <laughs> since before he started making beats. He came over to my house because uh, Bob Bob found Ty, mm. like found out who Ty was because off the Tutor and Buddha shit, they didn't put featuring Ty Dolla Sign, but Bob loved whoever was on the hook. So Bob figured that out and brought Ty through, and that's how Musha came through. And he was just DJing for YG. He wasn't even making beats. Exactly. I remember the day, like the day he like came over, and he was like, "Man, how do you how do you uh, like make beats? How do you play piano?" I showed him how to play "Lovers and Friends" because mm. that's like an easy ass song you could play. I taught him how to do that, and then he asked me for the reason. He asked me for the reason, like program the crack. Mm-hmm. I sent it to him. Ever since then, the next song I heard was "I'm Good" YG. He did, and then Rack City, and he was out of here. Wow. Huh. He just learned himself, because he, he got a good ear. Like, he knows, he's like Bob. Like, I put him and Bob in that same category, just knowing what sounds good, knowing what's right. You know what I'm saying? Like, he got, he got a really, really, really good ear, so he can, he can make hits. Just how Bob make hits, because he knows, he can step back and be critical, you feel me? Yeah, I think yeah. that's it's the hardest important. part. You, sometimes you got to step back. And you got to be able to be moldable, like work around in the studio with people. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, stand for what you think and you believe is right. Like, yeah. I know this one is. Yeah. And you can't tell me shit about it. You yeah. feel me? No, yeah. Mike, are you going to be making some beats so- soon? Because you know you DJ too. You know, know. some stylist to DJ. Yeah. Now, yeah. Listen, I mean. My boyfriend's been trying to teach me Ableton. He produces too. He goes by I- Mr. Carmack. So he's- Okay. Need he's more like, girl producers. I know. For real. Step up to the plate right there. I think it would have a very few, element. man. Yeah. Uh, there's probably one girl producer to every 200 guy producer. Yeah, yeah. You, should, you should get it rocking. It's not hard to make beats. It's hard to make good songs. Mm-hmm. You know, it's well, not hard to so learn how, how to make a beat. Do you decipher like, okay, you making a beat? Do you be like, I'm I'm 20 minutes in, fuck that one. Okay, or I'm Bob, back to that. Bobby cutting my shit off. <laughs> 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 Bob cuts right my on? shit off. I I I can't yeah. tell sometimes. You know, Bob cuts my shit off and makes me start some new shit. Sometimes you just gotta keep mobbing. You feel me? But uh, but I will say, loyal. I did that on my own though. Yeah, yeah. I did that on my own. Yeah, yeah, I did that. That's the only one I did on my own. Huh. Came to do. Bob was there for. He told me what was good, what was not. You feel me? 
Every yeah, other man. one. I made, four, beat, three. I made one beat in my whole life, man. And I went it like when I was 16 and I sent it to Nick. And no, I played it for him. We were together. And he started laughing, man. <laughs> that shit so, was funny. So I that never so I never geeked, made though. a beat again. <laughs> but I went out and I was, I was juice. I got the program. I made my beat. I was excited about it. It, it was hella exotic beat. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I was excited about it, my first one. He could have been like, yeah, you know, keep going, you know, keep trying again. But he was started dying everybody laughing. Everybody got to play their roles. I'm not over here <laughs> trying to write smash hooks, but he everybody got to play their and roles. And I was like, that was the last beat I ever made. I ever tried again. I said, fuck it, man. He killed me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm his friend. Yeah, as a friend, you got to tell your friends, you know, what you think is best for him. What's like your first beat sound like? My first beat was slapping. <laughs> <laughs> so Bob turned you down, then you turned Bob down. Yeah, you got to be critical on your friends because you want the best out of them. Always, you know what I'm saying? That's what real folks gonna do. They ain't gonna be like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I wasn't like, finna tell you that nah, shit was hot. That nah. shit was cool. It's all good. Okay, he tells me when DJ, I'm cool. DJ Michael, man, what's, what's your favorite song out the bay right now? Your ex- absolute favorite one. The one that you hear if you got an auxiliary cord in the car and you get to DJ, what you putting on? Quit catting. Quit, Quit catting. Yeah. Yeah. That song, that song, is, you want that song is older, though. Oh, I, I you mean like, what, like a yeah. more, hmm. I fuck with that Damn. big timing. I ain't gonna lie. That Nefta Farrell, that shit slap. That shit was tight. Right? Uh, I, I don't know. I guess Sue's new project. I've been slapping that hella good track. Like, the one yeah, with like Tiger. Yeah, with yeah. Tiger. Yeah, yeah I like I fuck with Sue on that mustard track, too. Yep. Oh, yeah. That one. Yeah. That's, any mustard beats, like, a hit. I like that Kailani song. Any nickname beats playing. a hit. <laughs> uh, oh, Active Bull? Yeah. Hey. That yeah. one sounded good. That's a good one. That that guy, I, the one with I am still on it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's just smack too. Yeah, that's just smack. Sure. Okay, so can we can we make this happen right now? When is Bob gonna get a record? And when we gonna hear besides the one you working on that you did a year and a half? Yeah. Okay. Fa- faithful, me and Nick made that probably a year and a half ago. But it's like honestly, like these songs, like the one, my jam for Jello. Me and Nick make songs all all the time. And if somebody, if we make a song that's a smash, and if somebody don't make it a single, then I'm a hub up on it. You feel me? Huh. Yeah. But uh, that's how know. honestly how it's been working because it's like we'll get in the studio with somebody. Like just last night, we were in the lab with Jason Derulo. And if he don't take Like we get the studio We can make whatever the fuck we want We're trying to make some shit for him But at the end of the day We can just make what we make You know what I'm saying yeah. A lot of times people will pass up on it Sleep on it And that's our song It's yeah, not, not just cause he pays for the studio songs. That doesn't mean it's his song You know what I'm saying If he wants it that's his song yeah. But a lot of times they pass up on it And then we're, we're free to do whatever the fuck we want with it So is there any throwaway knickknack beats in the cut? I got like 400 <laughs> throw away <laughs> knickknack beats. <laughs> you know, we might I don't want to die with, a, with, with, with songs we know could have been something on my email. So if we know song going to be something, be like, Nick, let me have that one. You feel yeah, me? We, but yeah. it's like, my Hot Box was the first song I put out in a long time. I took a little hiatus. I was just writing. I was just figuring things out. And once I got my, my, my momentum back up and my foundation was there, you know, new management, everything, I did a... Uh, I was, I was like, it's time for me to put out my own stuff. And GZ blessed me with a verse. Amila did the song. And then now I'm like, my, my, so these are like the first two songs, Hotbox and My Gen. So when it gets to, if it gets to like song 10 and I don't got a knickknack beat, then that's something No, wrong. see, that's what I was saying. He took a hiatus. He wasn't asking for no knickknack oh, beats. No, he wasn't asking uh, for No, nah, he wasn't asking for him, but he did take a hiatus. You feel me? But he just from him as an artist, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? He was still, still making right music now, right? the yeah. entire time. It's no, point, it's, just, it's no point in making songs you love if you can't get them out there right. And once I was, I took a step back that like Ty did. He was like, I'm going to give um, Wiz hits. I'm going to give Trey hits. Then he got with their teams and they helped blow them up. So I said the same thing. I'm going to get Tanisha this hit. I'm going to give songs so this song. And it's like, okay, people paying attention. People want to know the music I'm making. Now it's time for me to put out my own stuff again. Like three songs ago, she played this song we did in the background called um, F with You for Piz. Really dope song. Power just started playing it. So, you know, we we got a bunch of new songs we worried about. I turned down Power the other day. I heard like three knickknack beats in a row. So, I'm happy for him, man. Knickknack's taking over the radio if, if for he, sure. If he for making real. money, if he making money giving other people songs, and I'll, I'll figure out a, well, there's a way to make music, and we cross roads. You feel me? We brothers. You feel me? I feel like every time I turn on the radio, he'll let me see. 
Yeah. Let me see. Why? 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 Huh? Why ain't no, it is. It is. It's I on there. Yeah, really? It's in the beginning. It's like chopped and screwed up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you, you come up with that? Sound? Sound? Yeah. That was just a random sample I found in a sample pack, dog. <laughs> that was not no it's nothing special. That was just a random sample. He had sound. it all over loyal. He was like, Bobby, should I make this my tag? I was like, I don't know, blood. Like, <laughs> no, 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 Bob. Bob, you did tell me I should, but also Mustard told me I should. Yeah, I was, like, was like, I was like, I don't know. It don't got your name in it. Because before I didn't want to do tags. Because like when you look, Pharrell, Timberland didn't have tags. No nobody tags. had tags. Yeah. And then when Mustard did it. It's like that blew him up. He's known for having the tags. So for another producer to come out with a tag, you feel me? I'm not gonna have Nick Knack on the slap like nah, Nick Knack. Yeah. Like just like, do a little spin off of that. I, I had like to come with like more like I feel like Polo Don had a had a same Wait type a of tag as mine. Yeah, exactly. You know, like not saying his name, but just like some one little sound like a more subtle thing. That's yeah. a, when Bob, I don't remember you telling, telling me not to do it. I've been telling him for years he needed a tag. No, when he first asked me if that should be his tag, I was like, I'm not sure. Like, you don't want to have one or name in it. But I feel what he's doing. You feel me? It's like he'll hit. Like, if people don't like Nick, then it's like they can still like the song because they, they don't gotta hear yeah. his name on it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, we got them in the studio right now. I'm gonna let Micah handle her thing a little bit more because she's been killing. I got the most awkward <laughs> cameo and loyal. Nick Nick was looking salami in that video. Uh, yeah, bro, that shit is awkward. <laughs> you about to like blood? What, what? I'm not a background cat. Like I'm not the background dancer. But you want me to go in this motherfucker and hit the Diddy like the Diddy Bop? Blood? What am I supposed to do? You supposed to hit the Bernie when they yeah, think you're doing the Diddy. Yeah, well, I like can't. Rattled in that when video. Chris Br when Chris Brown is in the video doing all his dance moves and shit, really hitting it, like what the fuck am I supposed to do? I'm just I'm finna look salami no matter what. <laughs> Do you not like doing cameos and none of that shit? I don't like that. I don't even like doing radio interviews. Hey, so this is Nick, is like Marshawn. Marshawn Lynch. Nick is Marshawn. Nick is I'm just here so I won't get fined. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's the only reason I'm here. I'm just here so I won't get fined. Hey, so no, like big, big, like a lot of big looks hit me up like, yo, can we get Nick to do panels and producer stuff? And he'd be like, nah, I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like talking, man. I got to be drunk. Like right now, like I gotta feel like I got a nerve problem. That handy bottle. Is okay, gone. so while we got you right here, let's ask some exclusive stuff. If you were to tell yourself five, ten years ago, your own self, some type of words of advice, what would you tell yourself? I would say, man, keep your head up because this shit gets discouraging. Like the music industry gets very discouraging at times. You know what I'm saying? It's really hard to deal with all the different personalities and all the. All the different shit out here Especially cause In the Bay It's not just about music It's about like People live regular lives In the Bay Area mm -hmm. Like out here It's just like I'm not Me and Bob And Been anybody who wars. does music me and doesn't, We don't have a 9 wars. to 5 We just check in Check out You feel me We don't have a 9 to 5 It's like Out here you feel that pressure Like if you're not working harder Than everybody else Who's doing the same shit Then you're not finna be successful So I'm working today It's Saturday Regular motherfuckers ain't working today. Mm -hmm. right. I'm working tomorrow too, so it's like I I live a I live a life to where like when I get a wife and kids, my wife finna be mad at me all the time. I'm not finna be able to see my kid all the time unless it's like I work out a situation where like the studio may be at the house or something. I'll be damn near a stay at home dad then mm -hmm. with the studios at the house. You feel me? But it's like we don't live regular lives. It's hard to it's hard to really uh, define that line to where like okay, I'm gonna take this day off. Or something like you taking a whole day off and you're letting another motherfucker like out there who's doing the same shit as me. Yeah, take, it's all take about the, sacrifice. Take different advantages. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Take advantage of different opportunities. So the more days you take off, the more you realize, like, man, I go on vacation for a week. The whole vacation, I'm like, man, I'm tripping. I'm like, I'm not Emailing. working. Like, yeah, I'm not working. Like, I'm feeling like a loser if I take a yeah. week off. Where if I was to have a nine to five, be like, this is my time off to relax. The, the the industry and the life we live it's not we can't take days off like we can't go on vacation and really relax because it's can't, like you can't put that voicemail on your phone like you know forward I'm, to your email or whatever <laughs> it's like you got even on christmas i'll get some shit i gotta go tweet or email or some shit like it's no days off i'm like every girl i've ever dated always got you know mad about me having to go to the studio random times but it's like i tell nick straight up like we love, we love, like, if we're in a relationship, we love who we're with, but, like, mu music is this life we chose, man, so we we, we got to keep it mobbing, man. 
For real. Yeah, so that's what I would tell myself. We take off is the day we don't make the biggest song we could have made. You about to make some sacrifices later in life, but you about to really sacrifice like a a like picket fence life. Like we never finna have a picket fence Mm -hmm. life. You know what I'm saying? Because music is what we do, and it's like I'll be I don't work until eight o'clock. You Mm -hmm. feel me? The whole day I'm just doing bullshit (laughs) until eight o'clock, which is when I start working. And 8 o'clock until whenever Like 7 in the morning Bob What's the worst thing About the industry That most people That are not in the industry Man It's just It's everybody Got situational shit But me and Nick Been through some wars Man it's like We not the You know Typical pop girl Who gets to You know Gets the great management And gets to Just blow up Me and Nick Have real Been through some real shit You feel me Like Like shit you don't Want to know about Some behind the scenes <laughs> shit You feel me It's just like like True Blood of this music shit where after every season we got to deal with beat defeat a new villain or a new some shit going on that's what we go through man we don't got the the easy story man that's why we crazy because since the day we started making music we had motherfuckers that made us crazy (laughs) what's the most exciting thing or what's the most thing that you're like damn i can't believe this is it you know what i'm saying what's that moment feel like or what what is the 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 information that people don't know about the industry that's like, okay, y'all don't know about this, but when we got in the industry and we figured this out, this is the most I mean, basically thing. because we liked, me and Nick make radio, song, radio songs, you feel me? We make songs that could get played in the club and can gravitate to the radio and shit. So like, I, we didn't really know shit about shit, but like once them first BMI checks start coming in, we're like, hey, these is cool, you feel me? But like, I didn't know that if you got a song really, really mobbing on the radio, that you can make a lot of profit, you feel me? How the fuck do you have this beat? <laughs> I don't. I got. I mean, I got the DJ pack. So. Oh my hey. god! How do you have this beat, movie? But yeah, yeah. That's really. That's really like the one thing you you would say would be the the positive side of it is seeing seeing money come from this shit because when you growing up, I, my mom, you feel me? I did horrible in school. Horrible. I think I graduated with a 2.1 or something. Yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. I did Santa terrible. Monica. And my mom was like, man, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you got hella motherfuckers at my house. You feel me? You got, you got, and they're making exotic songs about fucking bitches, smoking weed, doing exotic shit. You feel me? My mom, like, for to have her go through that and see me, like, in, th- in that crowd, thank God she, like, knew Bob, knew everybody was a good person at heart. Before I started making beats, I didn't even know that was necessarily an option because just growing up, all you need is that first motherfucker to be like, yo, you can make beats. There's this program called Fruity Loops, you feel me? And once once my homie told me about Fruity Loops, then it was over and I Game fell in over. love with it. I feel like kids just need people to give them opportunities and be like yo you could do this you could be interested in this instead of you could be interested in history they're telling you what you can be interested interested in in fucking bullshit like math like it's all political i got partners gonna be in debt probably until they 50s paying to go to some of these top tier schools and it's like bruh it's like you want to be in debt for life you feel me this shit is whack man it's all a money system if you can see past that and know that you what you want to be good at and specialize in it and teach yourself how to be good nobody taught nick how to make a beat Mm -hmm. nobody taught him how to engineer he's going he's asking people he's going looking up youtube tutorials you feel me it's like you can teach yourself how to if you love it and you're passionate about it you figure out a way to make this shit happen you don't got to spend a hundred thousand dollars a year paying for some bullshit you feel me so in the future we're looking at the faithful record produced by Nick Knack coming yeah. from Bobby after the yeah, my after, jam yeah after my jam I think the next one after that'll be faithful you know it's really it's really really dope but who knows we might keep make make something new that we think is even better you know but it's a strong record you know but we working man the work don't stop like Nick said we on we on the clock all day you feel me mustard and mayonnaise coming up for Nick yeah mustard and mayonnaise man when, when that's album. dropping it's uh we working on it right now uh, he was just on Holy Ship. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you heard of that in Miami, where it's yeah. like a motherfucking rave on a ship. He yeah. was he was killing that shit. So when he get back out here, we finna get in the lab. And when me and Mustard get in the lab, it's easy. And y'all, I'm y'all, working with a motherfucker I know. Like that's my brother. Like 
It's yeah. just like working with Bob. You Y'all know out here in LA, right? Both yeah, of you. Yeah, we all. Yeah. Nick moved to LA first, and I moved to LA to be able to make music with him. That was the reason I came down here. Hmm. You feel me? Then Nick went back to the Bay, and then uh, and then we made one four three. I was going up to the Bay like every as much as I could, like once every two or three weeks, so we can keep making music. And like we just were like during that time when we made one four three, we just were like, hey, we gonna make a hit, bro. We're going to make a hit. We just felt <laughs> it, you know. And we were making a lot of bullshit. And then, oh, it, then, then we made one four. You don't know how many songs we oh made. Oh my gosh! Like so then we made one four three, and we like we knew it was a smash. We're like this song is a smash. You feel me? And then, uh, and then after one four three started popping, Nick started getting a little more money, and then he had the money to come back to LA, and we just we've been rocking ever since. Hey, y'all heard it right here. Um, it's not gonna be no altercations between these two. It's not gonna be no YG Mustard thing popping off of that. Okay, yeah. they gonna make them things pop off. Nah, all right, we, we might. Me and Nick, me and Nick, be, me and Nick yeah. be going ham on each other, but at the end of the day, well, that's real. You feel me? If you could be mad for three days, but you feel me? It's, it's my brother. You don't. It's get, bigger than be that. Be mad. I, if I get my my mom gets mad at me. You feel me? Like True. no homo. No homo is unconditional mobbing. You feel me? Yeah, it's real. unconditional love with him. Like, <laughs> I, I say it's unconditional love. Like, <laughs> you know, you, it, that's my brother. Hey, yeah. it's the kick it. Thank y'all for stopping by. We're gonna hey, shout out, up. shout out my tour management up in here. He been holding me down. He like that's that's my boy. It's my little you brother. You feel me? He shout out my boy Fesh. He's tour managing Bob. He like, goes to every every city with Bob and they can do crazy shit. Like, <laughs> that's my we boy. don't we don't gotta go too into those we stories. We be going but. dumb. And young Micah. Let's let's have you up on here. Who you want to give any shout outs and everything? Give Where can they find you at? Stuff. Shout out to the entire tsunami mob, Kehlani. Um, I'm so blessed to be a part of that crew. I'm so like blessed to just put on for this female movement. I feel like this generation needs to hear about us. We speak for all females from different aspects, rich mm-hmm. and poor. True. We feel all y'all. So, what's Ooh. your Instagram? Um, so it's my name upside down. Uh, my name is Micah. My real name, and it's W I C V H. And if you flip it up, it's my gut. Damn. Yeah, I was reading that shit. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I, went to, I went to a design school. So when it came to branding myself, I was like, I got to make it pop. Like, it got to look different, you know? So yeah, that's right. why I was like, you got to introduce yourself. Because I almost. <laughs> but like, yeah, say it one more persona. time slow. <laughs> say it one more time slow for people. Okay, what is so it? W? W I C V as in Victor H. <laughs> Micah upside down. Micah yeah. upside down. Okay. <laughs> the V is the A. Exactly. Yeah. That trap shit. Yeah. I got it. Hey, thank you for coming by. Exclusive mix. We did almost all the bass shit. Nick Knack, how you threw some other shit in there. But it's I all one good. one more Nick Knack V. I want to play. Yeah, we can okay. get into that. Yeah, on the outro. What's this one in the. What's this one in this the. This is the one. This is Nick Knack right here, too. What is it? I don't know. Shit, shit. I don't know. <laughs> this is that. This is that T9 Shea, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah, T9 yeah. Shea produced by yeah, Nick Knack. Yeah. Oh, oh, Watch oh, me yeah, work. Yeah, oh, yeah, I remember this one. I was like, man, how the fuck you got that? See, Bob, Bob, you could have had this. Hey, we got everything on the kicker, man. Bob, you could have had this beat. <laughs> Bob could have any beat I make, man. That's I'm making it on, huh? I'm making it on. Let me stop. You're just speaking the truth. Hey, introduce this record and then we gone. This is Bitches and Marijuana, second single off Fan of a Fan. Fan of a Fan come out on the 24th of this next week. You feel me? It's finna be big. Good luck for Chris and Tiger. Feel me? Bitches and Marijuana. And the tag is on this motherfucker. Let me see. Let me see. All the bitches. <laughs> hey, thank y'all for rocking with me. Of course, hey, man, I got those looking, tickets. Man. Thank you. Thank bro. y'all for coming thank through. Thank you, bro. man. We're going to link up, flick it up. Shut with time. Off top. Yeah. Off top. All right, y'all. kick it. Yeah.